How are we doing? How are we doing? This is Destination Denver, Colorado, and today I'm giving you the 10 biggest reasons to move to Arvada, Colorado, and we're talking about them starting right now. All right, this is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jimmy Everts, and listen, if you're interested in learning all the ins and outs, pros and cons to moving to or around Denver, Colorado, then this is a channel for you. So the subscribe button and notification icon you see on your screen, make sure you click on that as I'm dropping new videos for you each and every week. And as much as I try to be a little educational here on camera, I'm also a licensed mortgage broker covering the entire state of Colorado and team with some of Denver's most talented realtors. We are helping people move here each and every day. So the number and email you see, know that I am always the person, answer your phone calls, answer your texts, answer your emails, there when and if you need me. Now that we have that fun-filled stuff out of the way, let's get to what we're here for, and that is the 10 biggest reasons to move to Arvada, Colorado. So good old Arvada, located northwest of Denver, roughly 15 to 20 minutes outside of the city uh, with areas of Arvada. It's a pretty big suburb and it runs west. We're gonna get into that. So there are parts of Arvada where you could be upwards of 30 to 40 minutes from Denver, depending on how fast you can hit I-70. So the first thing that's gonna come to mind when you talk about Arvada is honestly how pretty it is. On the west side of Denver, you have the mountains right there in the mountain regions. It's a very green-filled community, especially in the summertime, uh, just very pretty. And Arvada stretches all the way into the foothills. So when you talk about living in a town that gives you a mix of, of small town combined with mountain, Arvada is gonna give you a lot of those qualities. You're close to a lot of hiking trails, you're close to a lot of outdoor activity. And so when I think about Arvada, I think about being outside and really enjoying those elements of the town. The second thing that's gonna be really big for Arvada is safety. And that's something that will be a common thread you hear. Now, uh, in terms of, of crime, in terms of you know the communities you live in, I, I will say it in every single video. You wanna do your due diligence and you wanna do your own homework. You're going to find most often that crime tends to follow density. So in any given community you're looking in, the more dense, the more populated it is, uh, the more crime reported. But when it comes to Arvada, it is continuously mentioned as one of the safer communities in, in all of the Denver region to live in. Uh, and that is also coming not just from statistics, but also from just word of mouth, talking to uh, friends that I have known for decades that have lived in Arvada, clients that have moved to there, uh, colleagues that work within the community, Arvada is going to be very high on that list. So if that is, I'd imagine to some extent it's important to everybody, but if it is extremely important to you, Arvada is going to rank high. The third thing to keep in mind is Arvada's affordability. Now, uh, there has been an increase in cost of living in Denver regardless. Arvada has been a, a, a premium place where people could find good communities, good neighborhoods, and at a price point that was going to be fitting for them. Uh, Arvada has become more and more expensive as time has passed, but I think the same could be said or has to be said for everywhere in Denver. So as of the making of this video, and I'm talking to you in the middle of May, uh, Arvada had a, a median list price of a detached home sitting at 600, had a median list price sitting at $652,000. Again, not average, the median number right there in the middle for detached home. And if you're talking about renting one of those detached homes, the median rent price as of the making of this video was $2,900. Now one thing, and, and we'll get into this as we talk about Arvada and its layout, is that uh, I think you're gonna see uh, some of those price points being higher as you are closer to the area of Old Town, which we're gonna dive into because it's one of my favorite areas. Old Town, there's definitely a premium to live there, but Arvada is going to give you some flexibility in terms of cost and in terms of options of living. And so for my condo folks out there, you're going to see the median cost of a condo as of the making of this video was 410,000. But I can tell you the condos are going to be definitely a premium as you get closer to Old Town because there are some very nice communities where people can walk right into the town. So that uh, median price may not be a very good reflection of what you might see as you work your way farther west. And the median rent for those same condos was $1,822. 
So Arvada as a whole, as of the making of this video, the median price for detached homes was a bit higher than, than Denver, uh, actually higher, I should say, than Denver. And we're in line with, uh, again, communities like Lakewood, uh, Wheat Ridge, getting down into Littleton. The fourth thing that's gonna catch your attention about Arvada is excellent schools. And hear me out, because you might be saying to yourself, I don't have kids, I don't care about schools, but schools are going to play a factor into your home value, the communities you live in, what have you. So Arvada is part of the Jefferson County Public School District. That is the second largest school district in all of Colorado. It's also home to uh, Ralston High School, Arvada High School, Arvada West, some pretty high ranking schools as far as niche.com, betterschools.com, uh, so a couple different websites that have a, a lot of good things to say. And again, when I talk uh, earlier about the safety of Arvada, same thing that I hear from uh, parents or even you know people who have gone to school in Arvada who enjoyed the school systems, who enjoyed the opportunities out there. And that's, we're just talking public schools. Obviously, you're gonna have private schools to choose from uh, in the area. So Arvada definitely has a lot going for it from an educational standpoint. But let's get into some of the fun stuff, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're going to live somewhere, you wanna know, uh, that's fun. So uh, point number five would be Arvada's convenient location. So I am a, a fan, of, I've said it on plenty of videos. I am a fan of the west side of Denver. It's, it's where I grew up. Uh, when you look at I-25 cutting uh, down north to south, south north, uh, you know, Denver, uh, I-25 runs right along the west side of Denver and truly does separate the city. So when you see these communities on the west side of town, uh, there's only so much room that these cities or, or towns can incorporate before we run into the Rocky Mountains. And so on the west side of town, you tend to have this blend where you have communities that are you know, really close to Denver. You can get down to the city in 15 to 20 minutes, but you also have that flexibility to turn the other way and head into the mountains and be there in, again, that shorter 15, 20 minutes. Arvada gives you this, this great blend with, with a twist. So one, Arvada is located, parts of Arvada are attached to I-70, and I-70 are big east to west interstate, and that's gonna run you down into the city or at least over to I-25 to get down into the city. So if you're anywhere near I-70 in Arvada, you're gonna be able to get both into Denver very, very quickly, and I-70 is also going to take you through the heart of the Rockies, so your ability to get west. So within that community, you can get to either of two big focal points of moving to Colorado very quickly. Let's see how many times I can say very quickly in the video. And Arvada also has access to public transportation. So the light rail system uh, that can be extremely useful in Denver if you're close to one of these stations runs right through the heart of Old Town Arvada, which in hindsight, I probably should have just talked about earlier because I'm referencing it enough and we're gonna get to it soon, but uh, that light rail system runs right there. So you'll have plenty of people who live in Arvada who rely on the light rail at least for a good part of their transportation, or at least if they are planning to go to something down into Denver, you know, a concert, museum, sporting event, what have you, they could jump that light rail and get right down there. And because I've talked about it and alluded to it, point number six, I had to think about that for a second, is Old Town Arvada. So Arvada has a vibrant downtown community and it's one of the coolest aspects. So I think there are two towns, uh, specific, you know, two suburbs of Denver that have the best downtown areas, in my humble opinion. And that would be Old Town Arvada and Downtown Littleton. Now I can hear, already I'm debating myself because you know, Southeast, you have downtown Parker, which is a, a very cool little strip. And you have downtown Golden, which is also very awesome. But Old Town Arvada is just a quintessential location that fits the needs for a, a variety of living. What I mean by that, you can go out in Old Town Arvada as just you know a single person getting out and about. You can go out as a couple, you can go out as friends, you can go out with groups of people. It's great for families, it really mixes everything. So it's got your restaurants, your shops, 
Uh, it's got different bars uh, that are among you know my favorites. So among them, you've got the Old Town uh, Tavern. You've got the Schoolhouse. Schoolhouse is one of my favorite locations to go to. It is, as you might guess, an old schoolhouse. Still has the chalkboard above the bar. Uh, good food, good drinks, very large place. And within a lot of these uh, places, uh, because Arvada Old Town is so walkable, uh, there's a lot of outdoor seating, a lot of patios. And one of the, the very cool things about that community is, and this came from uh, COVID and quarantine, is that during that period of time, obviously you had so many businesses that were operating in the street that they changed how some of the roads run through Old Town and they made those walk only. Whereas before you'd have you know, driving traffic, now you have multiple blocks within Old Town in which no cars are allowed. Uh, and, and you just see people, especially as, as many nice days as we get here in Colorado, you just see people out and about walking. You know, you see the kids with their ice cream. Uh, you've got a ton of different shops, a ton of different bars. And so you just see all of these people out and about exploring. And there's a, a good stretch, a good strip in, in Old Town where you'll walk down and you'll see not just the bars, the restaurants, the cafes, but you'll see a lot of boutique shops, a lot of locally owned places. Uh, one of the greatest Army Navy surplus stores you're gonna find anywhere, one of my, one of my faves, being a veteran myself. And again, some of the coolest wine shops as well. I, just, I can't forget uh, about that. You'll see some of these great locally owned places, great selections. So Old Town Arvada is going to be one of the better places, in, in, in my opinion, to explore in all of Denver. And so I'll mention with that, we're talking about home prices, understanding that there is, again, a premium to some extent about living in that community. But even if you're within, say, five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I myself am probably 25 minutes from Old Town, and it's still a great place to just drive down and explore. I feel like every time I talk about Old Town, I have these, these thoughts, we're gonna talk about this place, this place, and this place, and then I just get caught up in how cool I think it is, and I ramble for a few minutes. Seventh thing you need to know about our or seventh reason to think about moving there is it's got 125 parks. And you know, we talked earlier about all of the exploring. You don't just have the mountains and Old Town and Denver. You've got a ton of outdoor activities uh, within Arvada itself where you don't have to go very far. So if you're into hiking, biking, camping, fishing, uh, bird watching randomly it is. Uh, I've talked to some local groups that, that enjoy bird watching and Arvada is very popular for that. So a lot of things to do just within the geographic boundaries of Arvada itself. And there is within that uh, a ton of green space. You know, as you, especially as you go west, uh, you're gonna see that, that Arvada just stretches and there's a lot of land that they will and have maintained for long periods of time. Uh, Stanley, Stanley Lake, excuse me, being part of that. So just a, a lot of green, a lot of outdoor activity, a, a lot of community care in that. And it just makes Arvada a very nature-based place to live. Number eight, you've got a lot of family attractions, uh, not just family, cultural attractions, uh, a lot of different festivals, a lot of different community events, uh, and not just all geared to towards Old Town, but a lot of them will be uh, in that community. So throughout the year, they'll do things in the fall, uh, they'll do things for kids around the holidays. I should say everybody around the holidays, but you know, kids get more into that stuff than anybody. So it, it's really, uh, I mean, I don't think there's an exclusive community in Colorado, but a very inclusive uh, community, a lot of different uh, events. So as an example, the Arvada Center for Arts and Humanities will do a lot of different exhibits uh, and a lot of different events that cater to just a, a wide variety of people. So Arvada has a ton of that going for it. Um, and again, just speaks to how much that community is about the things that you can do there before you have to explore anywhere else. And kind of cheating to follow up on that. We talk about the exhibits at, at the Arts and Humanities Center. Um, but a lot of theater, a, a lot of local entertainment attractions that are put up from time to time. So uh, there always seems to be something going on, you know, on a smaller scale, right? We are still talking about a suburb and, and a small town, uh, but still a lot of action. 
So the last two things, so number nine and number 10, I'm kind of kind of lumped together. Uh, so they are two admitted drawbacks, per perhaps, perhaps. So um, number nine is actually pretty lighthearted. So uh, we joke locals, Arvada, when I say it stretches west, it really stretches west. And not just does it stretch west, but it stretches west on service roads, meaning roads with stop signs or traffic lights in which your speed limit is, let's say anywhere from 35 to 45 miles an hour, usually usually 40, right in the middle. Because of that, there are parts of Arvada that we lovingly refer to as Farvada, where uh, it may not be far. You, you plug it into your GPS and it says you're 12 miles away and that doesn't seem that bad, but driving those 12 miles adds another 20 minutes because you are on side streets with traffic lights. So there are areas of Arvada, I mentioned this in the very beginning, areas of Arvada where I can get to in 20 minutes. I'm actually, after the making of this video, I'm gonna shoot out there myself. So I'll probably be in Arvada, I would say safely in 20 minutes. But there are parts of Arvada that if I want to get to, will take roughly another 30 minutes to get to because of those side streets, because of potential lights, and just how slow, I mean, admittedly, you have to drive. You, you don't have uh, a fast highway or anything to get there. I know people who absolutely love Arvada for that. They love the fact that they can get some distance and just be out in the wilderness per se. And then I know some people who have moved to Farvada and said, okay, this is just too much. We need to have that quicker access point. So something to think about as far as what parts of Arvada you may want to explore and just how close to that old town area uh, where again, you have quick access to, to the city and the mountains that you want to be. And the 10th, and this is very unique to Arvada because there aren't very many areas of, of Denver where this is even a conversation, but there are areas of Arvada that are on what we call a floodplain, meaning that the homes, the properties on those areas are more at risk of flooding than really anywhere else in Denver that I could compare. What does that mean to you? Does it mean that Arvada floods a, a lot? First and foremost, no. Arvada does not flood often and is not, you know, it, that's not something we're consistently talking about, but there is risk of it. If you are a renter, uh, certainly something you're gonna wanna chat with, you know, a, a landlord about and the risk and, and if there's any extra steps that you need to take. But this is more important for potential homeowners who are looking in Arvada because a flood plane will require a separate uh, insurance policy for that. So your typical homeowner's insurance policy uh, will cover some water damage, but it does not cover if your house actually floods. And so those, those flood planes, and depending on what type and how big the risk is, that flood insurance can be substantially, uh, a substantial amount of money. And that again being separate from already paying your mortgage and your taxes and your insurance. So now you have that flood insurance. It can increase the cost of buying a specific home. Uh, does that affect all of Arvada? No, again, it's going to be specific to certain locations and I'm, I'm not gonna bog you down with covering what areas are and are not, but that's something you're gonna wanna make note of. If Arvada interests you and the thought is to purchase a home, you wanna make sure to keep uh, the floodplain concept in mind and ask questions about that. But I mean, overall, when you're thinking about all the positives of Arvada and the two negatives I'm telling you is that some homes might be a risk of flood, not that that's a small thing, and the fact that you might have a longer drive, ah, eh, I'll let you weigh that. Overall, an amazing community, definitely one that I am very fond of, and one of the more popular locations I have found for clients to want to explore. But that's just 10 reasons that you may or may not consider Arvada, Colorado. And if you want to discuss more of them, that is a perfect opportunity to give me a call, shoot me a text, write me an email, because as you know, I love talking about this stuff. This is Destination Denver, Colorado. I'm your host, Jimmy Everts. That was 10 reasons to move to Arvada, Colorado. Until I see you next time, peace.